Okay, my name is Dustin Cooper. I work for Media Current. I'm a Drupal designer, and this session I've titled Sharpening the Axe, and it's all about planning and preparation and that kind of thing, and uh, how it's really important to the design process. Um, so I like this quote uh, from Lincoln. Um, actually, one of my mentors, Dante, that I work with, actually used to bring this up a lot, so it's just drilled into my head, and, and I think it's you know valuable. And Lincoln is awesome. That's an actual photo uh, uh, that I took. Uh, okay, so let's go through a little uh, introduction. We're going to talk about discovery. Um, we're going to talk about sketching today. How many of you sketch? Cool. And I'm probably going to ask that question again in another slide, but ahead of myself, that's okay. And then we're going to talk about wireframing and mock ups and other stuff. So, again, I'm, I'm a proud media current designer and uh, just hello and it's good to see you guys, and, and I hope we can all be friends. I thought we were friends. Nope. <laughs> we are now, starting now. Uh, okay. So I've been working with Drupal for maybe four years, probably seriously for maybe two years, but kind of, you know, built some brochure sites back in the day and stuff, and, you know, Drupal's always been uh, friendly to me, and, and it's been a great environment to work in. So uh, I sketch, I create wireframes, mockups, and I write some front-end code. I come more from a designer perspective kind of thing than I do from like a programmer. Uh, people that program and do stuff behind the scenes, I'm glad that they do it and that I don't have to. <laughs> uh, and I'm always a student, I'm always learning. So you guys, you know, correct me, you know, today because uh, I'm always learning as well. So um, you know, I think all of us are kind of like that. That's why we like camps and things like this. So it's a good environment for the learning. And some of my favorite tools that I use are uh, OmniGraphic for wireframes. Uh, I do use Photoshop for mockups. Uh, I'm interested in attending Eric's session. I will get you out of that time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, even though I'm going to talk a lot about Photoshop and mockups uh, this session, but you know things are changing. Maybe doing uh, uh, it all on CSS and HTML in the browser and doing kind of live prototyping and stuff. So it's very interesting. But this is how I do it, and uh, it's still very beneficial to do things like this as well, especially knowing how to do it. But uh, Illustrator, I love Illustrator. If you guys have uh, seen the Drupal Camp Atlanta site, did that and used a lot of Illustrator stuff in there, and so all that kind of stuff. Sublime's what I use for my text editor, and SAS and Compass is you know what I like to do my uh, you know, front end code. In, so. uh, I like beer, and I like long walks on beaches, <laughs> and uh, I like to grow my beard too. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite pastimes. It's the first thing that you said to me. Yep. <laughs> I like computer. I made that. So who's seen this? Oh, yeah. Two yeah, people, three fun. people. Yeah. <laughs> that's yours. Probably most people. Yeah. And Mike Herschel animated the bubbles on the websites. So well, I just want to know, how does the water drop not become part of the ocean? That's, that's something we learn in the advanced class. This is a beginner <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> You'll have to stay tuned. I, I, no, I don't have that scheduled this time. But maybe that's Drupal Con, that's one of the events. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Dorothy. Hi. We have no more seats. I, maybe we could. There's, stop. Say something funny here. <laughs> Say something funny. Yeah. <laughs> something funny. Dorothy here. He's going to stay in I made that too. That was what I was talking about. So this was a really cool project. I volunteered last year to do this, um, and I worked with Media Current, and that's kind of how they saw some of my talent and kind of got hooked in with them, and that's how I landed a job. So that was really cool. I'm like out of breath. That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I went bowling yesterday too, and that hurt. That's ridiculous as well. So that's something I've done, and these are a couple more things that I've done. These are mock-ups. And a couple more. And yeah, all that's like some of the work I've done this last year. So, now let's talk about discovery. So discovery is probably the most important thing in the projects that we do. You know, it's the discovery process. Who goes through a full discovery process? Is that? Raise your hand. Who's never heard of discovery? Like, there was a time when I was like, that wasn't a thing that I said. Anybody have not heard of discovery? Like, you know in this process. Okay. So 
So it's really important. It's an initial meeting between you and your client. You know, this sets the, the tone for the client. You want to um, bring your A game. You want to you know, use this time to really find out what the expectations for the project you know, is going to be. Um, you don't want to, you want to put a lot of time into connecting with your client, establishing a good rapport, and uh, you know, documenting you know, everything you can, because you're going to use all this information throughout the project. You don't want to be going back and forth with the, the client if you don't need to. You really want to try to get as much as you can, you know, stoke your fire with as much information um, that you can to, to help you throughout the project. You need information, this is really important. It's not, not just drawing pictures, you're designing. You're, you need information to find out you know, how you're going to design these systems. That's what's going to look. So it's where you and the client get on the same page. You, know, you want to understand, like some of these clients, it's really complicated. You're not sure, you gotta ask them tons of questions. You really um, uh, uh, need to take the time, basically. It's easy to just, you think you understand the project. You think, yeah, I've made a website before, they just want a website, and they can just give me their brand, their logo. You know, They'll fill in the content later, but you really want to collect as much information because you're gonna be designing a system that their users, their, their clients, um, uh, need to be able to use it easily. They need to, you know, it needs to make sense. It needs to be you know, built for them. You know, this isn't WordPress. <laughs> so this is the time when you get clear on what the goals are. This is where you ask lots of questions, take lots of notes. Use Evernote. I use Evernote. You can use whatever, but I'm just going to promote things that I like. Um, and for some of us, we have these things called functional specifications. Um, all the details about, I'm glad I don't have to write a lot of those, I write some of it, but you know, these detailed documents on what's gonna, what the plan is, what's gonna be built, what are the features, what are the modules, what are the, you know, what's the menu, and what's all the, the pages, all the details of what's gonna be included in this project. And this is like really important, because you know, these clients, they change their mind, they want something else, they now at the end, they're like, no, I wanted it to, you know, also sing to me, you know, and, oh, that's not in the functional specification. You want to have that clearly defined, you know, so that you have a document that you can say, no, that wasn't in there. That's going to cost, you know, $500 for it to sing. Come on, guys. So you really want to take this time to um, create a you have the functional specification, read it thoroughly, and understand it. I'm really nervous. Okay. I'm fine so far. Just breathe in. You're going to be good. It's true. I think I was, you know, told slow down, don't go so fast. You did have the party first, boy. Mm. <laughs> Dude, that's brilliant. <laughs> okay, so uh, questions to ask. Um, you know, uh, when you go to these meetings, uh, just like I'm nervous here, sometimes I'm nervous in a client meeting, you know, and I'm like, uh, I like to draw things, you know, and, and, and it's, that's not so good. So you want to be prepared. Like, what kind of questions can you ask these clients? Uh, so I've listed a couple here, like, what are you looking to accomplish with this project? You know, that's it question to ask. Um, what kind of emotions do you want your clients to feel? When you're, so, you know, they're so have to do with their brand or you really want to get inside their head. What, you know, um, uh, is it a professional site that you want it to be a serious tone or is it more of a fun craft site and you want it to have this, you know, the experience of the, the user have the experience of, you know, um, feeling warm and kind of connected, maybe it's you know, community driven, so you know, that sort of thing. You want to ask them, you know, maybe what is it that uh, makes your product better than their competitors? So you can start, you know, they have all this information about their product, they know the most about it, you know, they know better than you, so you want to ask them as much as you can about that um, and get as much information as possible. You know, who's your target market? You know, uh, what is their niche? Or who are they trying to serve? Or if it's a lawyer, you know, what, what is their niche? Or um, you know, uh, just trying to find out exactly who to build this website for. We actually created um, customer personas for uh, one website where we identified uh, with the client who who's most likely using this website, and so we identified as students were a primary persona. But there's also like librarians that use it, and there are also faculty that use it. But trying to, to structure this thing to be, you know, what is, what's the primary persona so that say somebody says, oh, you know, we want to add this bell and whistle. Well, you know, we could add bells and whistles all day long, but at the end of the day, that's going to delay projects and there's deadlines. But So we really need to think, well, okay, we want to add that bell and whistle. Does the primary persona of the student um, need that bell and whistle? <coughs> or is it like, well, they would never even use it. 
And so it's like, well, that's a good then reason maybe not to include that feature or to put it on the back burner. And so that's stuff to help you organize. It's, it's really, um, you know, uh, uh, good to identify as much as you can. Have them describe their typical cu customer and, you know, ask them why they're their typical customer. And when their typical customer visits their website, you know, what is it, what experience, you know, do, does your, does the, the client that you're asking these questions want them to, you know, experience? You know, what, what is it that they want them to go through? You know, do they want, you know, I don't really have a lot of examples off the top of my head, but, you know, uh, uh, what kind of experience do they want them to have? Ask them if they have an established brand and guidelines. You know, some people have a formal work, um, formal sheet on all of that, brand guideline sheet on, you know, how the logo treatment, how it's to be used, typography, spacing, all those details. So you definitely want to grab that, get their vector logos, all that kind of stuff. Um, so get all out front. You don't want to start designing something else that doesn't fit into those guidelines, and then you're going to have to go back and rework that. You know, ask them if they have any color preferences, how many colors to avoid, you know, just really get into different questions. There's tons of questions you can ask, and these are just a, a few that I thought of off the top of my head. You know, ask maybe what adjectives they would you know, used to describe their product. And these are all things that you can, you know, just use to then go do searches on, start really diving in and researching, you know, their product. Instead of just assuming it all, just based on a couple questions you might ask, and then you go do it all on your own. Really ask them, ask them, and, you, and you're also at this, during this process, you're establishing a rapport. And, you know, clients want to be asked these kind of questions. It shows that, you know, you're really thinking about them, that you care about this project. And so um, the slides will be available online too, but uh, one of my coworkers, Josh um, Estep, is, has a good blog post on um, uh, this sort of stuff, so I put this in the notes here as well. Uh, we'll move on to sketching. When you, when you go out to the clients, do you typically have, um, do you go in with sort of like the artwork, like all photos or whatever that you use, or do you expect them to provide that to you, or is it just... So we're talking about photos specifically? Yeah, I mean, not photos, it's just any kind of artwork. I see, a lot of, I see a lot of websites and they have the same logos and the same artwork that they just downloaded from some free site and everyone looks the same. So just it just depends on the, the project. Sometimes I'll reuse what they have. It depends on the budget, depends on, you know, uh, so I'll use iStock Photo for a, a lot of things to, to grab. If it's a site that's really never had a lot of attention to photos, the photos are just weird or kind of not consistent. You know, something like iPhoto is a great place to do. Or if they've hired a photographer to take, you know, special photos, you definitely want to grab all that high quality, you know, photo and artwork and, and stuff that's already been designed. And they might require, they might say, no, we really, we want all this. One of my clients that had to do with the personas and the student, they had all this artwork made in the 80s. And it was all this cartoon stuff that just wasn't fitting the, the new look and feel that we were creating. So that just basically recommended that we did not use that and gave them a reason, you know, why wasn't you know, a little bit too, you know, it had to do with legal instruction, so just it was a little bit too, you know, like young kids, these were college, you know, uh, students um, doing legal instructions, you know, so it didn't really fit my opinion, so I gave them my opinion and they understood that, so um, in that case it didn't work out, and I actually went to iStock Photo in that case and found some other photos, and also when I was designing, like, if new content, say, on a slideshow, you know, if they're going to be adding new content, like, say, a front feature slideshow, um, if it's a big, huge image that's going to be there, you know, how are they going to get that new image each time? Are they going to have a photographer? Are they doing it themselves? Or iStock Photo has a lot of great photos. In this case, I actually didn't go with the slideshow. I just went with a, a main feature that would change just sometimes whenever they felt like it. And so then they could go out to iStock and get a $20 to $30 photo from there or an image and incorporate it into whatever the, the next kind of main feature they wanted to you know, talk um, to display. So, so that's all part of more. That's a more designed thing. It's not just putting the prettiest picture you can there and it's done at the end of the day. No, it's a little more to it. You want them to be able to, to you know, with Drupal now they can actually, you know, manage their own content, add new content. You want them to be able to do that. So, as a designer, you want to get as much from the client as you can up front if they have art, and then just kind of supplement their field. Yeah, I'd like to look at everything they have. I never say, oh no, don't bother with sending me all the photos you have to your website. No, no, that's not the case. I definitely send it all. 
um, and always asking, do you have your own stuff? Do you have, you know, and is, is, are you flexible with this? Is this something you want us to re redo? And we have the creative flexibility to, to, to come up with ideas. You want us to present those things. And knowing that that stuff's going to take time, that's going to eat up budget too. So that there's a balancing act there, depends on what their budget is. You know, and if they come to you saying, "Yeah, we're good. We just want you to do it," that's when I'm like, "Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I got this." And then of course I need to ask more questions to find out what then I'm going to go create. Um, I was going to ask you like I don't know if you're going to cover this later, but when you get into the discovery phase, like how do you work out? Do you do like billable hours, or you estimate time, or as far as stuff like that goes? Um, so the discovery process at Media Current is definitely, you know, there's there's a budget for it. I don't have to do that. We've kind of got a spreadsheet that's already kind of been worked out by my, uh, you know, like my mentor Dante and our design department kind of goes off kind of a certain set of uh, time there. So um, I actually just work within those parameters. So I don't have a lot of insight with that, um, you know. So, okay. But that's definitely something you want to figure out and find out. And there definitely needs to be a time that, you know, you don't want to keep going. You ask questions forever, you know. Yeah. So you don't want to do that either. And you can always come back and circle back with questions. It's really not a bad thing. But I'm, but if you didn't ask barely anything up front, and then you're always asking, asking, asking as you go, it's just not as as good as if trying to do that up front as much as you can. It really just sets a good tone with the client. And if you need to ask questions, you should always ask questions throughout the project. Reaching out, you know, Skype, email, however you do that. Phone. Uh, people use phones still. Uh, for internet access. What's that? For internet access. For internet access. <coughs> Sketching. So I already asked that. You guys did that. And so some of you do, some of you don't. And uh, I recommend it. Uh, I think ideally you always want to start with sketch. I mean, napkin sketching, whiteboards, paper, you know, however it is. some Just some real rough form of your idea. So here's some of the, the, the sketches that I was talking about. Actually, this is that student legal um, uh, instruction site that I was talking about. And so you just, you know, I'll do a layout. I'll do it on whatever paper. I just had graph paper, so I did it there. I'm, I'm not really stuck to a certain kind of paper that I like. Um, and sometimes I use pencil. In this case, I use pen. Um, and post-it notes, too. And the, yeah, there's just post-it notes that I was, you know, uh, playing with there with the marker. Um, so, and I'm still always exploring. I like to change up my tools and play with my tools, too. It's kind of excites me. Sometimes it's a little bit kind of, you know, I sometimes spend too much time doing that kind of thing, and it's at least it's you know, not as productive. But uh, you know, the fact is, though, sketching is a great idea. It, I really think it should be done all the time. Do I do it every single time? I don't. Sometimes I I do skip that. Maybe I just have a good idea, but more, it's always a better idea to sketch. Um, you're just gonna. What's good is finding things that don't work out. So you go, oh, now I figured out that that doesn't work out, and that just helps a lot. Because starting on a blank page is it's pretty intimidating. It's kind of like writers and getting writer's block. Same thing happens in design. And uh, it's cheap. It's cheap to iterate. So I could draw that out, realize this sucks, throw that away, try again, that sucks. If I tried to do that in Photoshop, it, it would have spent so much time and I'd probably be just frustrated and maybe I wouldn't, I just wouldn't iterate to get to a better you know, design. Just That's how I think writing code is too. You, you iterate on that, iterate software, well, iterating in design and, and is the same kind of concept. So uh, it's just cheaper than wireframing, and, and wireframing is cheaper than mockups, and that's you know why it's really important. And I've learned this, you know, that it's a lot more important now that I work at Media Current than, than when I was on my own doing freelance. So just some more examples of you know sketching. I can see tons of stuff. I think I hate all of it actually. So uh, and usually I hate everything that I do. That's just me though. And yeah, this is a time, like sketching really uh, is a time to do a lot of uh, research and it's like, what are you going to do? I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. And you know, there's a budget and a time, I don't know. So I really just started doing research. Research all kinds of ways. Research on the internet, of course, but if you can get out in life and just see how things are designed, commercials are a great way to get inspired. Colors, take a picture of, of just something you see, these beautiful colors from it, take a picture of it so you can use that to help inspire you. Um, just always stoking your creative you know, fire with lots of these kinds of ideas and thoughts and, and uh, then tuning it into your specific client and, you, and then you do some sketches and then that sketch makes you think of some the next thing. So that sketch may never be used but it gets you to keep thinking in that direction instead of just thinking because it's just not enough. You need more of an exercise to get it to come out in my opinion. So this is like 
one of the, one of the like 50 sketches I'd done with Drupal Camp Atlanta. That that client, since it was volunteer and I just really wanted to show what I could do, I took I took longer than you could ever probably take with a client because it would have been like a million dollar website or something. Uh, it took too long. But this was just some of the sketching I've done. And some of it kind of looks like what the site does now, but a bunch of it isn't there. So um, it's just one example. Would you say that's the beauty of sketching? Is you can get multiple ideas down and then combine them? Yeah, yeah. Parts from all of them. Yeah, so then you review all your sketches too, and then you're like, that was working, I like that, and now I'm going to make a new sketch that is these three things from these, and then it's like, oh yeah, that's, you know, the oh yeah, aha moments is what I look for. And uh, yeah, from sketching, and, uh, that's the good stuff. Um, I like to do mind mapping, which is uh, kind of just like, uh, like uh, Drupal Camp Atlanta, I actually did a lot of that, like I just wrote Atlanta. And then they did like Wikipedia entry on Atlanta. And then I found out like all these different things like the peach. So I put peach and then I branch out to you know other things. And I just keep drawing words and I just eventually I'm a page with words that are all associated with this concept of you know Drupal Camp Atlanta. Um, the Drupal drop, the, um, you know, the Phoenix actually is, is an icon for Atlanta, the city. And I tried to use the Phoenix for all because I think the Phoenix is so cool, you know. But, uh, it didn't end up working out. It wasn't quite as practical in the end. So there's those, those ideas. Sometimes you just love your idea, but then later you just realize, I got to kill that baby. You know, it's kind of like the baby you created, but then you just got to kill it. And uh, I'm not a baby killer. I just kill my own babies that were never born. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> sacred cow. Just call it, just call it, you know, sacrificing a sacred cow. Yes, exactly. Um, you'll sacrifice a lot. Okay, so I sketch everything I can think of, even the dumb stuff. The dumb stuff is the best because then you're like, you realize that is a dumb idea. I'm not going to do that. So <laughs> you just you got to get all that out of the way. Yep, you do. It's, it's that all there. Numbers. You're not like like come, none of us are like, you know, Johnny Ives. I guess would be something you know that you just it just comes right out. Like, it probably doesn't. I bet you he does a lot of sketching too, actually. Um, but it just takes a long time. I mean, I, I find like I'm not a uh, person that's like. Oh, you're so gifted at the. No, it's like it, I'm going crazy for a few days in this process, just killing myself and just hating everything that I'm doing. I don't know if you guys are like that, but and, you know. But, and I'm not. I think there's a lot more people that are artistically better than than me. But you know, artists are different than designers. I mean, their their objective is to you know create art and not necessarily design anything. They're just going with what they're feeling, and and that's not what I can always do. You know, if I'm designing a, a legal instruction site, I can't put Metallica music inspiration into it. That's not going to work out. So I have a job to do, and I have to get my head in there, and I have to get rid of the ideas that are probably wrong for it, which those are things that I come up with. You know. and, and you also repeat the same ideas a lot. Uh, I'll maybe use the same fonts, I'll realize, over and over. And I'm like, no, no, I can't be doing that. That's just not going to work out. It's the same thing. I can't use the same ideas and concepts. I need to change it up. So. So the Drupal Diver, before it was Drupal Diver, it was Drupal Sharks. And like, I don't know what that is. Like a, like a Drupal yeah. So, and, and there was like the Drupal Sun, and there was a Drupal, there was a whole bunch of things. A whole bunch of mind mapping and all that kind of stuff. I wish I had the Drupal Diver sketch. I think it's actually on the groups, but I didn't have a lot of time to do all this. So there's just a lot of sketching that went into that as well. And then we're on to wireframing, which I actually love wireframing. I'm a big fan of wireframing. Um, I do do a lot of wireframing. Uh, I'll do a wireframe for, of course, a home page, an interior page, this other page, that other page. Really want to get all that kind of stuff worked out. Mockups I don't do as much. I don't need as many mockups. I already got the wireframes that show me what I need as far as function, layout, and interaction. And that's that's the hard stuff. I mean, that's like uh, that's what separates it. I mean, basically from art. This is the design part. You're designing something to be functional. You're designing it to work well and be interactive. I mean, we've all been on websites that are terribly not, you know, use, the usability is terrible. You don't know how to get anywhere. You know, what people got paid to make this. This is ridiculous. You know, let me take care of this for them. And, you know, <coughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's because there was probably not a lot of planning. They, they didn't test it out. I mean, I'd love to do even more testing than I do, but, you know, uh, Wireframing is just, it's, it's tried and true, and I, I totally recommend it. Who here does wireframing? Cool. Who here, here uses OmniGraffle? Cool. 
who here? Well, we'll get to one of them. I have a question. I, yeah, I, sure. I, I use what I think is wireframing, but I don't yeah. know if what I'm doing is actually wireframing or not. Because my version of wireframing end up, ends up looking a lot like your version of sketching. So do you, do you have an example? Of yeah, so I call that like there's low fidelity mm -hmm. um, wireframing and high fidelity. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, like Balsamic has a tool that does it looks very low uh, low uh, fi um, low fidelity. Uh, where it is more like sketches, like a child who sketches it out or something like that, you know? And that's, it's very useful and it's very powerful. I have a little bit of trouble, I end up going to the high fidelity, and I, it's probably because I still have to train myself to kind of stop getting that detail, stop caring about straight lines. I think I'm OCD and I need like straight things, and that kills me when I don't see that, and it, it just basically breaks me down, but it's very much a recommended way of doing it. Do very rough, you know, uh, uh, the rougher you can do it, the less focus on those details. A client might, you know, say in mind like, oh, we didn't align things properly in my high fidelity wireframe. Whereas like, no, well, that's okay, we're not there yet. We're really just trying to say, is this box with this stuff in it good to go? And then that's what you're trying to get out of the client. That's why we're doing that. This is not just useful for you, but it's useful for the client, for you both to get on the same page to, um, you know, talk about what specifically the function and the layout and the, that kind of thing. When, when you're going through this process, are you thinking about browser and mobile separately? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not thinking about IE, IE at all. Um, <laughs> IE, uh, so that's a great, great question. Like, like um, uh, mobile, uh, what is it, like mobile design first? Oh, mobile first. Mobile mobile first. first. Yeah. Is that what you're kind of talking about? Like talking about, mo you're thinking about mobile and then there's the idea of mobile first, like where you actually do the design, do the mobile design first and then build up from there, out however you want to say it. Uh, it's, it's a cool, I've always liked the idea, but practically I haven't been able to do it that way. I just, maybe it's because I'm trained the way I am, I've done things the way I have, and you know, I'm getting older now, or I don't know what it is, but I, I, I kind of have to start the desktop. Now what I'll do is I will then always be thinking about mobile, and, and I'll always ask myself, does this work on mobile? Is this gonna work on a tablet? Is this gonna work on um, an, a, a phone? And, and I will do uh, wireframes for those, but I do them after my desktop. Whereas you know, a lot of the other talks are talking about starting on mobile uh, phone and working your way up. Um, instead of taking away things, starting the simplest, what's the most important thing that helps you identify what are the features that you could not live without, and which are like, if you go to Amazon's mobile site, those things that are on there is what they've decided as the critical things that you cannot live without. But if you go on their desktop page, there's just crap everywhere. And so, it, you know, that's interesting. So if you come from that, it's probably the best approach, but personally, I haven't. I'm still growing and evolving too, so maybe I'll you know, be able to work that out. I just think it takes more time for me to figure it out that way. And so time, it, everything comes down to time, and so you gotta do what you gotta do to get it, you know, going. It's a good question. Yeah, so this process helps you identify also what's needed and what's not needed in the project. Um, uh, so you and the client both see the page and then you know, uh, I start to think about mobile in that example and say, you know, do we do you really need to have 18 menu items, main menu items? Like, I don't think we should do this. I see how it, you know, basically it's a problem. You'll be able to show it to them. So sometimes when you're talking about this in the discovery, uh, they don't get it. And so having a wireframe to show them what's not working is actually helpful and to show them what it, then another version of, I recommend this and maybe take half of them and put them in the footer, you know, or something like that because, and ask them which ones are which ones could you live without? I think we should have seven. And so, what of these sev seven of these would you say ha are the most important? Then they get it. They, you know, they express that, and you kind of that's another iteration you can do. And if you were in a mock-up at that time, then you'd have to go and deal with all the the complexity of a mock-up to make that iteration, which you would just spend more time doing. Uh, sets priorities and features for. Uh, sets priorities for your features and blocks and other elements, so that, that's part of it. What's the most important things that are going on this page? What goes above the fold? And yet, still thinking about mobile, because when this all starts getting compressed, how is that going to work? And so, if there is something that can be removed, simplify. I mean, I like to simplify. It usually starts more complicated with lots of ideas, and then it's just bringing it down, distilling it down to what's the most important. And so, in the wireframing phase, you're really free from distractions. You're free from the color. You don't need that right now free from typography, images, textures, and all that kind of stuff. That comes in mock-ups. We want to keep it not there yet. So I know a lot, I mean, it was very natural for me wanting to do those things um, 
initially, you know, years ago, but it, it ends up making a lot more sense to keep that till the end. You know, really work out what it's going to look like uh, functionally, layout wise. I think. And like I said, it's just yeah, the wireframe is just more malleable. You can the special OmniGraffle, these other tools. I mean, you can use Illustrator. You can, you can really use anything. You could use Photoshop. It just doesn't just doesn't perform well that. But if you kept it simple in Photoshop, you kind of would be getting there. But the, the tools are just more difficult to use. These other tools like OmniGraffle and Balsamic, it's just quick. You just have stencils. You just draw, pull it up. I can pull a whole you know mobile tablet look. Just a whole iPad. Just pull it in. Boom, there it is now. And you start putting stuff in there. Uh, so that's just, there's, I will go through some of that in a little bit. And yeah, when you have these uh, wireframes in front of you, uh, so you've read through the, this functional specification, you've talked to the client, you know that they want this, uh, you know, how the things they want in the header, they want a user menu, they want the main menu, they want a feature, they want, you know, we figured out, you know, what kind of content, you put it into maybe three columns underneath, and you've really done that, but then when you review it, you start to realize, that, you know, I've been in meetings where I'm explaining this design, and right then I go, oh, and this doesn't make any sense, why did I put this here? I've already just, right at that moment, which I should just take more time to probably figure that out, but it's good though that it's happening during the wireframing phase that I'm coming to those realizations, or the client is now then realizes something they never told me, which was, oh, well, actually this is great, but I realize now that they, my my customers are going to need to be able to do this, and it's not here, and they're like, oh, great, now they were able to actually communicate to me because this is a process for them as well, and you know we're really the experts trying to to coax all that information out of them and, and then guide them correctly, you know, as correctly as we can. Yeah, so it's just really a lot easier to work it out during this, this phase. So we saw, you know, some drawings before and so now we see this is Omnigraph, I kinda of wanted to just at least give an example of you know, something one of the programs, so Omnigraph that I use and you know uh, So this is an example. <laughs> And it's a little bright, actually, but this can't see very well. But this is uh, so some, some of these stencils were just like this phone, uh, this tablet layout, and so I actually did um, kind of your your normal tablet, but then I stretched it longer because I wanted to fill the whole page because it wasn't a really long page. And I wanted to show what that was looking like, and I also decided to show what the dashboard looked like. That I you know that was an idea that I had that I said you know the students and the and the librarians and all these these different users they weren't really able to get to the content they wanted to very easily so I was like well let's create a dashboard after they log in and they can pull that down and now we'll have you know x y and z in there and that you know fit the bill for the, the client so did that and this is some of the mobile you know the tablet versions and and we got mobile so yeah I do go backwards and um, at this point, you know, I'm starting to think, you know, what am I going to keep? And let's see, did anything? Let me go back one. Yeah, like all those, that sidebar on the left is all gone. It's just not that. It, it's great to add to to the page, and it's going to provide useful like ebooks that are available for the student. But on a mobile, we don't really need to, to have that for them there. They really just need to get in. The main menu is just extremely important have some content, and that's all that was important here, so scaled it down to that. And so it took me to kind of, through that process, to realize that, and, uh, but I still would want to keep that on the desktop version. So. Is this helpful? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, I like, oh, yeah. Um, so here's just another example. A little washed out, unfortunately. Yeah, we'll just keep moving. I did a side one, you know, people look like landscape. We'll talk a little bit about grids. So there's a grid behind everything, so everything's kind of, you know, want to make sure everything's going to fit uh, when we actually go to, to build it. Okay, so yeah, wireframe is basically a blueprint, and you would not want somebody to not build have a blueprint when they're building your house. That would, that would, I couldn't even imagine what kind of houses would be built, <laughs> ones that would never, you know, resell. That's for sure. So um, it's the same thing with a website. You know, this is a some of these websites are extreme, they're almost as much as a house, so they certainly need to have blueprints and a foundation and, and all this planning going into it. So yeah, I might skip sketching, it just depends. Question? Do you usually document your notes for the developers, like functional requirements with your wireframes, or like separate, or what's your process um, So yeah, I might add to the functional spec specification if I need to. Um, 
and just document you know specific oh, you things. Write. Oh, I never pick up a pen. No, I do not write things. That's for sure. I don't use phones. I don't write, uh, <laughs> and I don't travel to the client. <laughs> that's what you're saying when you go. I don't meet in person with them. So that's just. But no. Uh, yeah, no, I, it's usually in a Google Doc, and I add com either I'll add comments to the specification, or I'll add, you know, I'll add my stuff and a comment saying, hey, I've added this, and then the, it gets reviewed by the client, and they say, yeah, thumbs up, we're, we're, they're good with that. And then it also, it's like, if, if the client ever came back towards the end of the project, and sometimes clients are very emotional during this project, it's, it's their baby, or they're tasked with it, so they're, they want it to be right, and they're also going to be you know, held accountable for it. You want, this documentation helps us to say, hey, well, we agreed on this, this is where it's at. We can definitely later, if they change their mind, we could change things, but it's going to cost extra money and, you know, just everybody stay insane in that process. If, <coughs> when I was freelancing, I didn't always, I didn't do that kind of detail. And basically, managing the client was one of the hardest things that, for me as a freelancer, that, I, that was an aspect that I was glad to, to go away. Um, you know, being a media current, I still have to, you know, I do discovery with the client, but I don't have to manage the whole thing and I don't have to do all that and that makes me happy. That's your question? Maybe? I don't know. Well, who's the person at your company who does functional requirements? Is it usually the client? Oh, so, um, no, it, it, there's a discussion. Basically, one of our developers usually starts it off because functionality usually is in their realm a lot more than it is mine. So they're, that's like information architecture, and so they do a lot of inf information architecture there. So I'm coming in, at least me, I'm coming in at that, that stage. And um, with us being on the teams that we are, we can kind of you know supplement each other. So it's kind of all of us at different times. It just depends on what's going on. So. Uh, where does Scrum fit in with all this? Is that something specific? Because I'm not really sure what it is, but somebody said, oh, you don't need all these wireframes. We're just going to Scrum it. What does that mean? Well, Scrum for me is a meeting. Mm -hmm. Is there a different Scrum? No. Scrum's an agile methodology. So uh, are we talking agile project yeah. management? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, what we use Agile in our company for other things, I'm a developer, but we sell something else and we use Agile for that. Um, my, my understanding of Scrum is in, in, instead of like what I'm used to, you meet with the client, they give you the specs, you say it's going to take you three and a half months, and then you go into a cave and you build it, and then three and a half months later you pop out this thing and it may or may not do what they said. It meets about functional requirements, but the requirements have changed since you were in your cave. This is a set of three month, three week intervals. So you're so you're constantly meeting and their stakeholders as well. They're approving your design as you go along. So it, it fun, you find out things a lot faster. We don't need a button there. That's not gonna work with this design. Or so that, we that do both. Well, basically I'll do one iteration and then weekly I do a scrum with the client and okay. then we review it and uh, realize more needs to be done. And we keep doing that until that ends and then I can move on to mock-ups. And then we'll still be meeting weekly. You know, if, if I don't have something on my front, probably the de developer does. Um, so, yeah, and then some projects get to a daily scrum where it's just a critical project's at the end, we're trying to launch and there's just things happening and it's every single, and these are usually 15 minutes to 30 minutes. I mean, so, you know, that's what we try to, to do because you don't want to be in meetings all day long. Yeah, it, it, it from, um, Oh, time? Is that what you're oh, sorry. Yeah, I actually realized. I'm actually going too slow, but uh, let me... It works. It's lightning nice. round, yeah. Yeah, I like scrums. Uh, so find lots of in information. Go to search Flickr for wireframes. Um, here's some popular tools. So Fireworks gets a lot of uh, thumbs up from a lot of people. Um, and I love Illustrator. I was doing some of it in there, but I, I like, I'm focused mostly now. And Adobe InDesign is getting a lot of uh, um, you know, praise. I'm just going to blow past these. That was Illustrator, high fidelity uh, wireframe. So it's black and white, no, no textures. But there's a little bit more. But my client actually was not happy with the lo-fi wireframes. And so I realized that he, couldn't, he just couldn't get his mind about that and what a mock-up was. And so we, I just needed to do something more hi-fi because it actually was something balsamic before, which I personally just not, not doing that program anymore. But it still has you know, a lot of, of value. So stencils, there's for OmniGraffle, you can go to this site, Graffletopia, you get all kinds of stencils. There's actually a couple of Drupal stencil sets, so like like a pagination, you can just pull pagination. So you'll, you'll just have that and be like, I'm putting a pagination here, boom. You don't have to design it. You know, I want uh, the search boxes that are typical in Drupal or other typical Drupal UI elements. You can just drag and drop and then resize them and you're good to go. 
and that plus tons and tons and tons of other ones. Yahoo has a great stencil set. Zurb Foundation's another one. There's a whole bunch of them. So get that from the slides. Uh, use grids. I would I want to explore more of this, but we're a little bit on on time. But uh, you can't really see the grid. The grid's actually these back here. And so you'll see like this is one, two, three. So this sidebar is three, um, three columns of grid. And then, you know, this is, I don't know, whatever. Let's just pretend it's eight and another three. And so now you're just using very easy numbers to realize how much you're going to break things up. <coughs> and you're going to line it. You're going to say every little section is going to line to this column right on the left. So you're aligning your divs when you're doing this? Yeah. yeah. And your regions, you know. Uh, it just, I think it's really helpful. Um, uh, yeah, it just kind of gets it, you know, you have like 960 pixels. Instead of dealing with all of those different pixels, you just kind of break it down to, I usually do a 12 column grid. Now I've got 12 columns. I know I'm going to have three for this, nine for that, or, you know, something like that. And they just look more professional when you do this. They just, look, everything being aligned is, you know, just has a professional feel. Omega uses a grid, so it makes sense. Tons of things use grid. Tons of these frameworks. So, and then when you have Omega installed, there's a button on the side, a little gear that will show the uh, the grid. Might have to enable that feature, uh, or it might be default. I can't remember. So that you can actually see what's in Drupal, and um, you can actually in Drupal do a lot of that kind of grid stuff. So I'll save more of that, you know, for you to look in on on your own. But Drupal, grid, Omega, all that kind of good stuff. And then provide good structure. Some more blog posts. Uh, that one's by me. It's about wireframing, and then a coworker, uh, Jeff, uh, did one about. They did a redesign, and so why planning and going through wireframing process on a redesign was really important. So again, these slides will be up on the site, and you can just go to mediacurrent.com/blog to find all kinds of good posts by by me and, and, and our team. Mockups. So when you get creative, so when you have the color, type, texture, patterns. It's time to get all that detail, you know, saving that off till now, you know. And during the wireframe, you're, you're thinking of details, well, put them in notes and put them in a file, but don't put them in your wireframes yet. Just save all that stuff for later. You can be thinking about it because, you know, if it comes, I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I just got to go and write something or draw something out real quick because it just comes to you at those moments, those breakthroughs. When you're forcing creativity, it's, it's pretty darn hard. Um, and so I bring in that wireframe into Photoshop and I'll draw on top of that. And I'll have a grid there, and I'll align everything that way. Um, and you can even do like Omega region overlay as well, but I think I, I simplify my Omega regions, and so I don't really need to do that all the time, but it's available. Uh, color. So I just want to talk about Adobe Cooler is built into Photoshop. It's, an ex, it's under window and extensions. I think it's built in. It's built in. Yeah. And, yeah, so you can just like, you know, some great color palettes. You could type in blue and you'll just get tons of blue palettes. So you could type in like, you know, uh, it's, uh, romance. Uh, romance, romance yes. like adjectives, like, yeah. Like, <coughs> Metallica, I bet Metallica comes up with something. Uh, or Metallica, definitely. And so you just get these great color palettes and it just makes life pretty simple. Uh, color Lovers is another way to uh, find cool color palettes. And there's uh, a whole bunch of websites that do this stuff, but just a couple I'll mention them. Uh, typography, uh, I limit my type, type to two or three non-standard, like Arial and Times uh, kind of fonts, and I use Google Fonts and Font Squirrel. I like Font Squirrel, it's a little more curated, but Google Fonts has it all, or a ton basically, that's easy to get into your site. So I stick to those, and usually two, three is a little bit too much in my opinion, but more than that would be kind of way too crazy. And I usually use a, a standard font along with it. And so then we turn, you know, the, the, I, there was a sketch, we saw a wireframe, and then we turned into a you know, mock-up. And add all those little subtle details, and little arrows, and spacing, and little header treatments. And, and that's when somebody goes, oh, look, this is so easy for you. You're so good at it. And it's like, are you kidding me? I just spent like, I about killed myself in this project. And so these are mock-ups. Because the actual site's and volunteer site didn't quite turn out. I, had, I actually had to start scaling some stuff back as I was trying to build it. So I learned a lot through this set. That was a little complicated, but most of it worked out. I was pretty happy with that. And so I got some links to some other like wireframing, you know, uh, links and some just some cool sites that I like to check out. And 
This one's a speed art. It's uh, showing somebody doing a whole like wireframe to them, or actually this is mock-up, whole mock-up. So if you type speed art and like wireframe or speed art and mock-up in YouTube, you'll see somebody do the whole build. And it's just super, you know, sped up. And it's kind of cool to see somebody, see somebody else do that work. Excuse me. Uh, some books I like are Designing for Emotion about the emotional side of, of when you're doing design and trying to tap into that and questions to ask the client and, um, and using colors to trigger emotions to maybe highlight a certain part of a page so that the client will go there and then they'll go to that call to action and, and leading them through the site with that kind of in, thing in mind. Communicating design, um, don't make me think is awesome. Like, the goal is when you know any person in the world goes to this website they should not have to think, they should know exactly what to do. They should know how to use the menu. It shouldn't be complicated. Just like when you walk into Sears, you, you know what to do if you want to find something. You look right up at the headings. Tools, clothing, it's that simple. And that kind of design people are used to, magazines, how they were designed, everybody's used to that, and that's why I want to utilize those kind of principles. Uh, and Smashing Magazine, I like the blog, and they got these great ebooks and they look brief, and you can browse through them. Some cool podcasts, Shop Talk. Big web show, creative process by Lullabot. That one's really cool. It's just different. I like they got all kinds of like illustrators and music writers. Just the whole creative process is so you know subjective, and it's just you know I always want to learn more about that. And of course, Drupal Easy has great podcasts as well. Great shows. All right, I made it. Questions? Thank you. I have cards up here if anybody wants a card. But yeah, questions. The links you were just showing, are they on a site someplace? They're going to be up on the Florida Drupal Camp site under my session when we posted that. <coughs> Same with all the sessions, yes. Do you find it useful to ask the client to make wireframes so that they show you their ideas for the next month? Sometimes the, the clients do have wireframes. Uh, I don't necessarily ask them to because if they can, the, you know, that would be great and we'll take them. Um, but that's something that we do for them if they don't do that themselves, yeah. And feel free to stick around, ask more questions, or talk to your neighbors. You're welcome.